Humidity is not the reason you are killing your Calafea. I know we've been told countless times to keep the level of humidity high in our homes to stop this plant from developing crispy brown leaves, but the truth is there are other more likely problems causing issues for your plant that can easily be resolved. This plant's natural habitat is under the canopy of larger trees in the jungles of South America where the level of humidity is consistently high. And the key word we should focus on here is not humidity, but instead consistency. It is incredibly difficult to keep our homes at the level of consistently high humidity that is found in the jungles of South America. You'd need to have about three dedicated humidifiers in every room working for many hours of the day to replicate that level of consistently high humidity. Not only is this unrealistic, but can you imagine the level of mold problems that would develop from all the condensation? That's just not for me. Our homes are just not meant to have such high levels of moisture in them. It's bad for our health. This misunderstanding comes from when we bring these plants into our home and they start to turn crispy brown around the leaf edges. It must be the humidity because our homes are less humid than their natural habitat, right? This is the misunderstanding. The problem is instead the changes in the level of humidity in our homes. Think about it. This plant doesn't know whether it's coming or going. One minute its environment is cool and relatively humid and the next it's warm and dry when the central heating comes on and blows warm air into the room. It doesn't normally experience this roller coaster of environmental conditions in the jungle. It doesn't appreciate it when it does. And let me break the news to you now. It's going to be really hard to keep the conditions in our home perfect for this plant to thrive and be blemish free. It's why so many of us complain about it and vow to never buy another one again. Our homes are just not consistent enough to have perfect specimens of Calafea living with us. It's unrealistic to have blemish free Calafeas in our home. So to save your own sanity, just stop worrying so much when you do see some slight browning. As long as the plant is not dying and becoming a crispy mess, accept it as one of those things and just move on. There are, however, things we can do to mitigate this humidity problems as much as possible to reduce the amount of browning on the leaves we experience. We need to keep this plant in a spot in our home that doesn't experience large swings in humidity levels. This is key. And I'll give you an example of a bad spot in my home to keep this plant. I own a humidity meter and I keep it on my plant bench in front of my large east facing window in my dining room. I've owned it for a few months now and I regularly keep an eye on it to monitor how much humidity my plants are getting in this spot. It's the area I keep most of my plants in. And I've come to realize that this isn't the best place for particularly fussy plants like Calafea because the humidity swings between 50% and above 70% on a daily basis. And this is not ideal conditions for a Calafea. So what's causing this regular swing in humidity? Well, there are actually a few things. First, it's in a spot right in front of a large window as well as directly next to a large vertical three column radiator. The battle for cool, humid air versus warm, dry air will be raging right at this very spot during the winter when the central heating is on. And this room is an open plan kitchen stroke dining room. So when we're cooking up dinner for the family, the level of humidity is greatly elevated, as can be seen with the condensation on the windows. And when we finished, this level drops back down to normal levels. And this really isn't helping the situation. And then we have the external door to the garden that will blow either humid or dry air into the room when opened, depending on the season. All these things make this spot less than ideal for a Calafea. So why is this swing in humidity such a problem for this plant? Just look at the leaves. Pretty much all Calafea leaves are large, thin and delicate. They're stunning, but they are incredibly delicate. This means that they are more sensitive to subtle changes in the environment than thicker leaf plants like Ficus elastica or Monstera deliciosa. When humidity is high, moisture sits on the cells of the leaves, creating a nice damp environment. When the environment suddenly changes and the air becomes drier, the cells lose that moisture, burst, become damaged and turn brown. If the plant is used to living in a not so humid environment that doesn't significantly change from day to day, then these problems are less apparent. So to solve this humidity conundrum, choose a spot in your home that is away from external doors, heating and cooling vents, 
large windows or anything else that's going to blow in humid or dry air around the plant. The aim of the game is to keep its environment as consistent as possible. Have you ever brought a Calafea home from your garden center and watched its leaves turn brown within a few weeks? Makes you want to cry and pull out your hair, doesn't it? This is your new plant adapting to its surroundings. You see, it was happily living in a nice, consistently warm and humid environment in the garden center that was probably constantly monitored and has been moved into your drier home. Your drier home won't necessarily mean the death of your new plant, but just remember that it's basically homesick and going through a bit of shock. Be patient with the plant. If you pop it in a place that is consistent and treats it with the right care, it should start to send out new unblemished leaves provided you consider this next area of concern for this plant. Humidity swings don't help your calafaya but it isn't the primary reason you are killing it. So what is the real reason? Water. And I don't necessarily mean under or over watering, but actually the water you are using. It will probably surprise you that the water you use to irrigate these plants is probably the number one thing that sends them on a downward spiral. You see, water is the very thing that runs through the cells of all our plants. It's the building block to life. In fact, a plant could be made up of up to 95% of water. Quite staggering when you think about it, and you can begin to appreciate how crucial it is that the water we use is suitable for these highly sensitive plants. Consider how we feel when we go on a holiday and drink water that we're not used to, it's not necessarily as clean as we used to. We get sick, and this happens to our calafeas. Most of the water coming out of our taps at home is treated with substances like chlorine or chloramine to make it safe to drink, and even fluoride to promote healthy teeth in our communities. These substances aren't harmful to people, of course, but it's a different story for our sensitive plants like calafeas. Chlorine and chloramine in particular are toxic to plants. Now, calafeas won't necessarily melt away like the Wicked Witch of the West when we water them with chlorinated tap water, but over time and with regular watering, our calafeas tend to become sick and show symptoms like yellowing leaves with crispy brown tips and edges. While the low levels of chlorine in water will be fine for most plants, such as philodendrons, aglionemas, and peperomias, some plants will not like the slow buildup of chlorine in the soil and it will affect their leaves. And this browning of the leaves problem can also show up if you live in an area with hard water and where there are higher traces of lead. So it's well worth reconsidering the water you use to irrigate your calafea. Rainwater is the gold standard here if you're able to harvest it and clean it to make it suitable for your indoor plants. Plants love rainwater. Makes perfect sense, really. Rainwater is the stuff they live on in their natural habitat and it contains natural nitrogen, which promotes healthy foliage growth. If you've ever kept your plants outside during the summer for them to get rained on, you'll have noticed a dramatic improvement in their health by the time autumn arrives and you bring them back in. It's because they're getting rained on and are not affected by the mild toxins in our tap water. If you're able to collect rainwater, and just make sure you filter out most of the baddies before watering your calafaya. And I'm primarily talking about bugs here. You don't want a bug problem spreading throughout your indoor plant collection. And other than rainwater, there are a few choices you can choose from. Distilled water is a very popular option, provided you can get good, cheap access to it. But I found this to be a fairly expensive option, particularly if you have lots of plants like I do. So a good option would be to only use distilled water on sensitive plants like calafeas. Filtered water systems like Brita Filter do a good job of filtering out toxins in tap water and is another good option. The only problem here is volume. The normal capacity for something like Brita Filter it's approximately 1.4 litres of filtered water and it takes 15 minutes for it to filter the water. It can take a long time to filter enough water for your entire collection, so again, it's probably best saving it for your calafeas. Another great hack is for those of you with fish tanks in your home and that is to recycle the water from your fish tank when you change the water. This is a fantastic resource for your plants that would otherwise be discarded down the drain and comes with the added bonus of containing free food, otherwise known as fish excrement. Something that I've been using for the last couple of months, and I owe this one to the viewers on this channel who suggested it, is water conditioner that is often used to clean the water prior to use in aquariums to make it safe for fish. This exact same product can be used to clean tap water 
and make it safe for Calafeas. It's early doors, but I am seeing some encouraging results with no significant extra browning in my Calafea since I started using it. A little goes a long way with this stuff. You only need a drop per litre of water and it works to remove chlorine and detoxify heavy metals in tap water. This makes it an affordable long-term solution for making tap water safe for our Calafeas. Check out this video next where I talk about seven houseplant care rules you should really break in order to have the best plants.